G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. Today we're giving you an update on Shed Boys Reef. We're gonna be having a look at exactly how this tank is going and we're gonna be looking at the par levels on both the display tank and the frag tank on this system. The idea of this tank is really for SBS. There's strong lighting, strong water flow, it's a bare bottom tank, and the, the scapes in particular are really designed for lots of little SBS colonies. And so you'll see a lot of different acros in this tank. They're all fairly small colonies, but you can see really good growth on them. Probably the one uh, group of corals, which is uh, you know not an SBS, are the gonies, which are over in this section here and they're looking really good as well. They're enjoying the flow. And one of the interesting things is this largest colony in the front here is actually putting out little pups. And you'll see in a minute, there's a few pups from this colony that Shed Boy has actually taken and put on frag plugs and has propagated and they're actually becoming full colonies themselves. So the corals are looking really, uh, really good. The fish is, uh, we've got heaps of chromis and heaps of uh, dispar anthias, and they really fill the tank out. But there's also the pair of genicanthus angels. Uh, there's a few tangs, there's a, a powder blue, uh, a convict. There's the uh, uh, blue spot rabbit fish, which is awesome. And this tank's looking really nice and, and sort of where I'd expect it to be at for a tank of this age. So let's go around the back and we'll have a look at the rest of the system because anyone who's seen Shed Boy's Reef knows that there's a heap more to this system than just the display tank. We're behind the main display and you can see the external overflow, the plumbing, and uh, we've got these Orfex which are suspended from the light rail. And we're gonna look at these a little bit uh, more closely once we get the power meter out and test the power of this system. Um, the flow on the surface of this tank is amazing. It's so long and wide, and the amount of water movement, it really looks like uh, a reef with just churning water flow. It looks so good. This is, of course, where the magic happens. Shed Boy makes his scapes here. Uh, we've got his glue, his marker rock, all the tools of the trade to create some of the best aquascapes in Australia. Moving around this way, We've got the huge MRC protein skimmer mounted in the sump here. And then we have the frag tank. Now, I haven't been to see this tank for quite some time and this is really what appealed to me the most. You can see so much growth in all these frags. He's got the Gallery Aquatica uh, frag rack system mounting these uh, egg crates up. Uh, we've got Acropora, Montipora, there's Pavona. There's a really nice little uh, bright pink bird's nest. I'm gonna have to get one of those off him. Also, we've got uh, the gonies that we we're talking about. So these are the pups from the one in the display tank. And he's got, I'm gonna say six or seven of them there and they're going really, really well. They look amazing. He's also got some miscellaneous LPS, more Montipora down here. And then his workbench and his beautiful quarantine tank. Anyway, today we're gonna to look at the par of his two main tanks, the frag tank and the display. So, of course, this is Shed Boy and uh, Shed Boy's got his Apogee par meter. Is that correct? Yes, Apogee MQ510. And we're going to use it in 
first of all in the frag tank and we're, we're going to see what the PAR is. Now for anyone that doesn't know, the term PAR actually refers to photosynthetically active radiation. So effectively, it's the light which benefits the corals to allow them to photosynthesize to gain nutrition through the process of photosynthesis. So effectively, it's a way we measure the quality of the light and the intensity of the light uh, that is benefiting the corals. So, uh, Shed Boys used this before, I haven't seen it. So how are we going to go about using this PAR meter on the frag tank? So basically, we've attached it to this wand that will allow us to put the sensor under the water to the spot that we want to put it. So this is a good example of a spot that we would typically measure. So on the frag rack, which is where exactly where the corals are receiving the light. And so the sensor is in the tank and you've got your, uh, the actual meter itself giving you a readout. So looking at that, you're getting the fluctuations probably based on the fact that the water movement at the surface is uh, yeah. still churning. Yeah. So, but you'd say that's around about uh, a par of 200. Yeah. Um, so generally we're looking at, uh, a, a, the depending on the types of corals we're keeping really dictates what par we're looking for. And so what sort of par would you be hoping to have on your frags in, in the location where the frags are growing? So for your acro colonies, um, things like that, I would say probably 250, 350 par. Uh, your Montiporas and stuff, you want it 150 to 250. And then things like down the end here, we have the hammers. They're in a quite a lot shadier position, even though it doesn't visually look much different. They're actually sitting at like 120, 150 par. So in other words, a par reading of around about, let's say 100 to 200, you'd call uh, relatively low LPS sort of levels. Uh, 200 to 300 would be for your, your highlight corals. And uh, I mean, you can certainly go higher than, than 300. And uh, with a lot of the tanks that uh, would be running, we'd be expecting to see levels up to about 400. So, in this tank, we've got our Hydra 52s. They're probably, how old are these lights? Six, seven years old. Six or seven years old. So they're quite a few years old. Uh, we're getting a par reading of, so it was 200 on the rack. Yeah, yeah, depending on where we go, but 200, 250. Of course, there's variations between the lights. If you're yeah. directly under the Hydra, you're gonna be receiving more. Yeah. So, well, it's reading 250 now, yeah. so I guess that's underneath the two. Yeah. What is it, the, the reading on the bottom of this tank? Uh, should be about 150 from memory. Yeah. 160 or so on the bottom. So on the bottom of this frag tank, of course, it's a shallow tank. So the bottom of this tank is naturally going to have a higher par than a tank that's deeper. Um, so 160, certainly, you know, that's not too bad given the age of the lights and um, <laughs> <Don't do that. laughs> uh, and the location uh, of them, they're, you know, they're raised off the tank. So let's have a look at the PAR under the Orfex in the display. So we're having a look at the PAR level in the main display. Now this tank is lit by five Orfex Atlantics and it's a really good lighting system. It's a great spread, but we really wanna see how intense it is running it uh, at the bottom of the tank. Now, we have got these lights set to their peak of their day cycle, which would probably normally be about lunchtime sort of thing. Yeah. About four hours from 11 till two, 11 till three, something like that. So we've got them running at their peak, and that's an important point because we're really looking at the light schedules at their peak. So on the bottom of this tank, which is 66 centimeters or two and a quarter feet deep, we're looking at a par level of- About 200. About 200. So that's a, a good uh, a 50 number. on top of uh, what the frag tank is on the bottom, even though this is a, a much deeper tank. So in the middle of the tank- Looking at 320. So in the middle. 320, so that's a, a very good level for in the middle of a tank. And given this tank is designed uh, primarily for SPS, having a par reading of over 300 in the middle is, is really good. 
what do you got there? Uh, 400 on that Maleficent. 400, so a little bit higher. Almost 500 on the uh, Red Cap. So these are some really good readings. Yeah, really and highlights. <laughs> so the uh, intense lights in the, the middle of the day, um, perfect for SBS. And uh, it's, yeah, exactly what you, you know, really set out to achieve with these lights, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, wanted to blanket the tank and a lot of light, basically. So we'll use this palm meter in future episodes of Gallery Aquatica TV. We'll take it around to some of our favorite tanks and we'll see exactly what the, the par level is um, at a variety of locations in a variety of tanks. This setup really is something special and the size of the tank, the system with the frags, the size of the refugium, the skimmer, everything is really designed uh, beautifully for the growth and success of corals. And this lighting system is probably the, the benchmark of it all. It's an amazing light system and it's good to be able to quantify exactly how good it is. To be able to see that we've got a par of 200 on the bottom of the tank, uh, of three to 400 in the middle of the tank, and up to 500 just under the surface. It really goes to show exactly how well this tank is designed. And the best thing about it is that the spread is very consistent. So from one point on the bottom to the next to the next, it's very, very similar in par across the tank. So we'll have a look at uh, different tanks and how they compare different lighting systems. And we'll look at the par on a variety of episodes in Gallery Aquatica TV in the future. So that's our episode on Shed Boys Reef. Um, thank you so much for watching. I'm Kevin the Fish Guy. Happy reefing. And uh, I have to say, this one is definitely one of the best. It's one of the ones that I really think that if I was going to set up a tank in my house and spend huge amounts of money and spend, <laughs> I can't say that, okay. Okay, all right. That's it for this week's episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Don't forget to like and comment on all our videos and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned to Gallery Aquatica TV for more exciting episodes to come. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing!